a weekly Tvatara on the Parsha. Here is your host, Rabbi Asaf Prisman. This week, Sefer Sohima and Vahavta Lorecha Kamaycha. Shalom to everyone. I would like to share with you another idea to do with this time, Sefer Sohima. And Mir Hashem, time permitting, I would like to end with a incredible story, a true story that happened many years ago. It's a bit famous, but it's very fitting for the Dvar Torah. We'll start off the Gemara Nevamus, the Gemara Nevamus, Daf Samech Beis Amud Beis, which was in Daf Yoyim a couple days ago. Famous Gemara that says that the 12,000 pair of Talmidim, i.e. 24,000 students, which were 12,000 pairs, students of Rabbi Akiva, HaKadosh Buhu took them away during this time period between Pesach and Shavuos, and the reason stated in the Gemara is because Mithnei Shelo Nahagu because they didn't honor one another, and that as a result the world was left with barely any Torah. Shnishtak Chatoira says Rashi Torah was forgotten until Rabbi Akiva went to the south and he taught retaught the Torah to Rabbi Meir, Rabbi Yudah, Rabbi Yosi, the Hilag Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, and Rabbi Lezer Ben Shamoa. And they restarted giving over Torah from that point onwards in history. A couple of questions I want to raise, and the Mirz Hashem will answer all of them. Question number one: It seems to be a bit of a harsh penalty over here that they they were taken away because what they didn't honor one another. How can that be? Such a strong punishment. Question number two. It seems like the Gemara is emphasizing to us the fact that they were taken away and passed away dafka during this time that we're in right now between Pesach and Shavuos. Aside from the fact we all know this time represents judgment, din, just like we spoke in the past, Pesach represents chesed, and then we have this time period till Shavuos that represents din, so a person has to be extra careful because Midas Adin is in the air. And then we reached Shavuos, which is the balance of the two, which is Tiferes. But the question is, aside from the fact that it's Din, why is it so fitting that it's during this time that they passed away? And question number three, it's a, sh- a small question, but it'll be the diving board for, for, the answer, for all the answers, for the Yisoyed, the concept we want to share, for all the, 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 the that will answer in Mirza Hashem all the questions. There's an Bidr Shraba. The Rishi Shraba says about Rabbi Akiva when he started reteaching the Torah to these new set of students. He says, You should know, all my first groups of the 24,000, 12,000 pairs of students passed away. They didn't die. The only reason they died is because Shaitai in the Tsara Elu La Elu. Which means. They weren't happy for each other's spiritual success. So the question begs itself, is not is that not a contradiction to what the Gemara was saying in Yavamus? The Gemara says it's because they didn't honor one another. Seemingly, that is different than not being happy for each other's spiritual success. Says Rav Dessler in his book, Sifti Chaim, this midah, this negative midah of Tzavus Ayn, that you're not happy for each other's spiritual success, it's not just a negative mida within Bein Adam L'chaveroi, it's a true contradiction to the 48 kinyanim, the midos that we acquire the Torah with. The Saba Mikelim says that the Torah needs to have a base, you need a base kibble to be compatible with the Torah. You need to, have to, you, you need to make yourself into a vessel that will be able to absorb the Torah. And a person that has a nature that he is selfish and doesn't have a good heart that cares for others, then he won't be compatible with the Torah and won't be able to reach high levels because he's too selfish. And by that, he won't be able to be compatible with the Torah. Only someone that breaks his nature and becomes not selfish and cares for others, he's the one that will merit to reach high levels with the Torah. Abbein Yena takes this to a bit a, a, more of an extreme and he says something that's very... Very, very, very strong, very, a very extreme statement. And he says, a person that has Tzavusayim, that is not happy for his fellow Jew, when he reaches spiritual success, 
Rabbeinu Yen says he can be even reach the negative level of being called someone that hates Hashem. Suine Hashem. A person could be his whole life the Dibu and Bemaisim. That's the Lashon Rabbeinu Yoyna. Bemaisim the Lashon. He can always be doing mitzvahs and speaking nicely. And on the outside, he seems like it's a, he's the biggest tzaddik and he indeed does all the mitzvahs in all the chumus and everything. But at the end of the day, if it's hard for him to see that his friend is succeeding sp- spiritually, i.e. I. in learning Torah, in doing chesed, in being a masmid, etc., then that person is mamish called a son Hashem. And the Hezbollah to this is actually pretty simple. The Hezbollah is that if you really care about Kaddish Baruch Hu, you should be happy in your heart to see that there are other people that are in the Eman Avadim Neemanim to Kaddish Baruch Hu, people that are Oivad Hashem, and they're very loyal to Hashem, and they use every second of their lives just to do Torah and Chesed, you should be so happy that there are people like that in the world, if you really care about the king. Just like it says when when the, the Bnei Yisrael wanted to get a king, and they didn't want Shmuel and Avi to be in charge, HaKadosh Baruch Hu says to him, Amar HaKadosh Baruch Hu Shmuel, B'zeh shayta inahem tzara b'cha, because they looked at you and they couldn't take the fact that you were succeeding so well and hence they wanted the king even though you were Navi Hashem and you represented me they didn't just hurt you they hurt Machut Shamaim. they were against me Abinu Yaina teaches us a very fundamental and very important concept to live life with which is this idea of Tzal Usain not being happy with your friend's spiritual success can Chas Vishalom bring us to a point where even though we're, it seems like we're being Oyved Hashem every day, we're doing everything, Torah and Mitzvahs, and full time all we do is Oyved Hashem, but at the end of the day we can still reach, unfortunately, Chas Vishalom, the level of being called someone that hates HaKadosh Baruch Hu. The obvious way of testing oneself where he's holding is to see what he feels when he sees someone that's succeeding amazing in spirituality, Chesed, Torah, doing mitzvahs, helping others. Are you happy that there's such a person in the world? Are you happy for him? Are you happy for HaKadosh Baruch Hu? Or Chas B'Shalom not? There's a story over here that the Sif Chaim brings down that once upon a time there was a Rosh Yeshiva and he had all his Talmidim learning in an amazing way. He calls a friend over, which was a big Rav, and he says, look, look how amazing, how Gishmak it is that all the Talmidim are learning. So this big Rav asked him, are you happy because they're your Talmidim and it's your Yeshiva? Or are you, ha- are you going to be ha- the same happy, reach the same level of happiness when you see another Yeshiva that's like that? A person has to be honest with himself and work on this Midah to be able to reach a level that you're happy. You're happy, actually very happy for Gadish Buhu. There's other people that even on the surface seems like they pass your level of, of spirituality. The Sif Techaim writes down over here, that a way to reach this level is perhaps hidden in the Pasuk Ve'avta Le'echa Kamoicha. If you look carefully, Rashi on the Pasuk, even though Re'echa, in a simple meaning, you would think means your fellow Jew, but Rashi explains Re'echa is HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That's what Rashi says. And therefore, if you really love HaKadosh Baruch Hu, you get to a point where you know everything's from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and you don't think highly of yourself because you know the whole world is HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and Al Yedea Avala Kadesh Buhu, you gay you reach the level of bitul of yourself and therefore you realize everything's from Hashem, Mimele then you can really reach the level of the Aftalha meaning your friend, Kamocha, literally, because you're happy no matter what. Your friend do does well, you do well, it doesn't matter. Everything's from Akadesh Buh. And the last piece of the puzzle is that Pirke Avoy says the Dishtamish Betaga Khalaf which means whoever uses the crown of Torah for himself, i.e., he learns Torah, but he uses it for honor. People give him a lot of, a lot of honor. Wow, you give shiurim, you know, psh, you do your, you do mitzvahs, you know, then he he's, he he deserves to be taken from the world. He doesn't have he doesn't have a schus kium. He doesn't ha- is not entitled to to merit to 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 live anymore because he's taking Torah and he's actually using it for his own honor in a selfish way. That's one of the biggest dangers of Tzahus Ein. Because when a person Tzahus Ein, we just said, that's the root cause for many, many, for, for, for huge, horrible things that a person can reach. The root cause is that he's not happy. 
If he's not happy, that means he's only caring about himself. If he's not happy when he sees someone else reach high level of spirituality. Mimele, we can go back to all our questions, and I think we've answered them all. First of all, there's no contradiction between the Gemara and Yevamois that says that the reason the Talmudin passed away is because they didn't honor one another, as opposed to the Midrash Rabbah that says because they had Tzahu sign, they weren't happy with, with each other's spiritual they weren't happy with the success of their fellow of their of their friends, because as we saw, one is the root cause of the other. When a person is not happy, has tzau sign this negative mid of tzau sign, not being happy with the spiritual success of of the other, that causes the tzitza, the result, the ripple effect of other negative traits, which on the surface is seen as not giving kavod one to another. Number two. We said, is there something intrinsic about the idea that HaKadosh Baruch Hu orchestrated that they pass away Dafka during this time? So we said, aside from the fact we know Mida Sadin is hovering over us during this time, but there must be something else, because it seems like the Gemara is screaming out, and they died Dafka from Pesach to Shavuos, only during this time. Perhaps the reason is because, as we alluded to earlier, this is Dafka the time, the days between Pesach and Shavuos, these 49 days are connected the kinyanim of the Torah, all the ways we acquire the Torah. And this idea of Tzau Sain is exactly the opposite of that. Because if one has Tzau Sain, he cannot be compatible with the Torah. And more than that, why did they deserve the death penalty to be taken away? So that we saw with the last piece we said. Because the person that uses who has Tzau Sain, then the Etzim is showing that he's using the Kessel Torah, the, he's using the Torah for himself, to get honor for himself, as opposed to for HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Of course, all that we're saying, we have to normalize this idea, it's, it's in the Amoraim, in the Tanaim HaKadoshim, so each one is on, our, on their level has to take this concept. Yeratzon that will be able to work on our Midas, especially during this time, which this is the time to do so, as we prepare for Chag HaShavuos, Matan Torah, to work on ourselves, to realize that Kodesh Buhu created all of us to be able to get closer to Hashem, to elevate ourselves, and we're all together part of one unit. And we should be, not only should we not be happy, we should be extra happy when our friends do well, because that means that Kodesh Buhu has a better melucha, and that's what we yearn for. I would like just to end with a short story. This story is actually about the famous Taz, and the Taz decided that he has to go to Galus. He, he, because he, a war broke out and he used to be the rev of the city and then suddenly everyone went their way. And he decided, he saw the Wach HaKodesh, that he needs, he doesn't want anyone to know who he is. He was a huge Talmud Chacham. He wrote, he wrote the whole Sefer on the Shulchan, on the Shulchan Aruch, called the Taz, Turi Zav. And he didn't want anyone to, he didn't want to get on or anything. So he didn't want anyone to know about him. So he decided he'll just go to, low, to some shul, whichever city he ended up in, and he started cleaning the shul. Of course, in his own time, he learned Torah, but no one knew who he was. He looked just like a stranger. And the rabbi of the city was a big tzaddik, but he wasn't such a big Talmud Chacham. So when people asked him shailas, for example, of ad- when they shechted animals, and they asked him, is this kasher, not kasher, when he didn't know he, what do you say? He played it safe. He said, it's Asr, Asr. So he chafed up everything. Everything was bad. Every time he has a shaila. One time, the Rav was, wasn't feeling well. He was away for a couple of days. And they came to the show to ask Shaila, but the Rav wasn't there. And they saw this person cleaning. And they said, you know what? He looks like he's a learned person. Let's ask him a shaila. And they asked him a shaila, And they started seeing that he knows a bit. And he said, no, this is kosher. They said, what? We haven't heard that in a long time. Suddenly, everyone started going and asking him. Eventually, the God of the Rav realized what's happening. He said, how can it be? We haven't gone to Shilas for so, so many times, so long. So they realized it's this person, this person, the Taz, that was tell- no one knew it was a Taz. And they said, what is this? You're asking, you're passing Shilas when there's a Rav in the city? No, let's do that. And they put in Mecherim, no one was allowed to speak to him. They put, it out, put him outside in a... And the Kikal in front of everyone, he was very embarrassed, and, but he was happy. This is a good tikkun for him. Because, of course, all he cared about, and that's why I'm saying this story, 
to be an Eved Hashem and he was happy when others were succeeding and he didn't want anyone to know about it because he didn't want to get any honor for his learning. One day comes a little girl and she, it was Mama Erev Shabbos and she came with a chicken to ask the if it's kosher and he, and she comes out of the show and she starts crying. So the Taz sees her and he comes up to her and he said, excuse me, what, what happened? Why are you crying? So she said to him, we have nothing to eat now. The Rav trafed up our chicken. He said, what was the Shaila? Tell, tell me the Shaila. So she said to him the Shaila. And he said, actually, go back to the Rav and tell him, I and Taz, go to the Sefer Taz, which he wrote, but no one knows it's him. And he said, Simon so-and-so, Saif so-and-so, just tell him that. So she went to the Rav and she said, Taz, Simon so-and-so. And the Rav didn't understand what she says. She what she was saying. She said what? So she screamed it out. I and Taz Siman so and so, Sif Katan so and so. And then the Rav said, Hmm. Okay. He opened up the Taz and he saw it's the same Shaila she asked about the chicken. He says, Wow. She and he said to her, Okay, okay. It's kosher, or kosher. She came out. She was so happy, and she went to her house and they had a chicken for Shabbos. So of course the continuation of the story. This is a true story, by the way. The Rav came to the person. That, he asked the girl, wait a second, how do you know to say this? Who told you this? So she said, the man is standing outside. So he, he realized this person outside, who was a Taz, was a very big Talmud Chacham, and he asked him, who are you? Where are you from? And eventually, he had to say the truth, that he was the Taz. The story doesn't end here, because one of the Mispalalim in that show, one of the people in the community, came up to the... He came up to the Taz and he said, I thought you wanted to hide the fact, I don't understand your story, you wanted to hide the fact that you're the Taz and you don't want to get covered. But now you blew everything over, everyone knows who you are now. So he said to him, yeah, when I'm the only one at stake and it's my covered, I, I, then yeah, that's what I wanted to do. But the second there was a girl crying and she might not have a chicken for Shabbos, I said I have to put my own agenda aside and I have to do my best to help this girl. It's a phenomenal story. And then the Taz, I think, became the Rav after that and everything. But it was a phenomenal story because you see that someone had such a clear vision what life is all about. All he cared about is HaKadosh Baruch Hu and Am Yisrael. That's all. He put his own agenda aside. He didn't have his own agenda. His own agenda was to give Kavut Shamaim and to help the Am Yisrael. That's all. And that's why the second he saw a girl was in tears, he, he couldn't handle them. Or he said, I have to help her. Ah, what's going to happen? My whole plan's going to be demolished and they're going to end up knowing who I am okay but that's what's on Hashem right now Yeratzana will be able to internalize this idea of running away for Tzavus Ayn and quite the contrary be, ha- be happy for anyone in Klal Yisrael that reaches success in spiritual levels have a good job information, please feel free to email prismanoftorah at gmail.com prismanoftorah at gmail.com Thank you. Have a wonderful Shabbos.